Hey everyone, it's Ben from board to bits and welcome to part 7 of our series on making 3D meshes through code in Unity. Now that we've created a grid that uses distinct and discrete cells um, using separate quads, we're going to create another grid that uses a field of vertices that the quads all share amongst each other. And this is useful for things where you want to have kind of a smooth gradation between your cells. Just a quick note, the code I'm going to be using for this video is um, largely influenced by the cat-like coding uh, written tutorial, which I will put a link to in the video here as well as in the description. I've done a little bit of modification to it, mostly for clarity of how I'm explaining things, but um, that really is what got me started with this one, so I have to give a huge shout out um, to cat-like coding for that. So let's jump right into MonoDevelop. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to copy our discrete procedural grid function that we made last video. Copy and paste that down here. And I'm going to rename this to make contiguous gr procedural grid. Um, you can obviously name it whatever you'd like. I'm also, before I forget, going to change that up here in our start function. So we're going to say contiguous procedural grid. And so now we're going to be following this method when we start our program. Uh, first thing we need to change is our vertices array. Right now the size is based on this idea that every single um, cell is going to need four vertices. That's no longer the case. Now we really need is a single grid that is equal to the number of, um, the number of cells in a given row plus one because there's going to be that final border that we need and then we're going to need that on the X and the Y. So we're going to need the grid size plus one multiplied by the grid size plus one for the two dimensions. So we can change that here. We're going to get rid of all of this and say grid size plus one times grid size plus one. And again here if you were doing a distinct X size and Y size you would want to have these be um, different. In addition to that, um, we're going to keep our tracker integers and we're going to keep our vertex offset because we are still going to shift our um, shift our cells so that they're centered on the um, whole numbers. Down here, we can keep this framework of the grid size. However, we're going to delete all of the contents in here because right now what we did in the last Thing was every single cell we created all the vertices and we defined all the triangles. Now what we're going to do this time, we're actually going to kind of loop through twice, which is a little bit more expensive, it's going to take a little bit more time, but the reason for that is that we have to set up all of the vertices before we can tell the triangles which vertices they should be using. So what we're going to do, we're going to delete all of this for now, and we're going to start by creating um, creating all the vertices. And the other thing we need to do, remember that we're for our vertices, we're going through grid size plus one. So instead of stopping when we're less than grid size, we're actually gonna go less than or equal to grid size on both of these. So that way we're gonna get that extra one in there on both, um, both dimensions. And now inside of here, what we can do is we can say, we can set our vertices at V, remembering we have this tracker up here for V, is going to be equal to a new vector 3 and that's going to be the x value is going to be x times the cell size minus that vertex offset which basically means we're setting it to um, this starting off setting it to the center of the cell and then just shifting it halfway um, so it'll be at the, actually at the edge of the cell uh, y is going to be 0 and then our z is going to be the same idea, y times the cell size minus the vertex offset again. This is actually kind of similar to what we did in our discrete array. However, we were actually um, creating this offset here and doing it as actually a full vector 3. We're doing it a little bit differently here. And then the other thing we need to do in here is after every vertice is set, we simply need to increment the V value, the tracker, by one. So that's the first step, pretty simple. Um, we're just simply setting this grid of vertices. From here, 
we're going to do a second um, iteration through this and I'm actually going to copy this because that's going to work pretty much the same way. I'm going to paste that down here. The only difference this time is that we're now, instead of setting the vertices, we're, we're only interested in setting the cells of our grid, so we don't need this extra equal sign. We can stop when we're, um, we can stop once we're equal to the grid size, so we don't need that extra one, so we can get rid of those equal signs um, in both grid size for X and Y. Oh, and we do also want to make sure, at this point here now, our V tracker is at the maximum size of the vertices array, so we're going to reset that back to zero. I can all quickly note that here, reset vertex tracker. Put a note in this one too, create vertex grid. And now here we are going to be setting each cell's triangles. So we're keeping this triangles array the same size because our cells are each still going to require two triangles for each cell, each quad. Um, so that's not going to change. Now inside of here, we're actually going to use something kind of similar to what we did up here. We can actually copy and paste this. I'm going to copy all this right here, paste that down in here because we're still going to use this setup of our first triangle is going to use basically the origin point and then the rest from there are going to kind of shift from there. However, remember when we were doing this in the last video and making discrete quads, we could just add one, two, and three because we were just using a single four um, a set of four vertices for each quad. Now we're suddenly kind of, we have to jump rows a little bit. Like the first, the first uh, vertex is going to be at the origin point and the second vertex is going to be one to the right of it. But then our third one is actually going to be up one row. And then our fourth one is going to be up one row into the right one row or into the right one space. So we need to kind of add that in here instead. So instead of just adding two to this, for this one, we actually need to add the row, which is grid size plus one. So now it's just going up. Whoop, what did I do there? Oh, I. So for this one, it's same position as number one, but up one row. This one's going to be same position, up one row, and over one. So it's actually kind of like a combination of these two. And so it's going to be V oops, plus grid size plus one plus an additional one. Now obviously transitive property you could just make this V plus grid size plus two but it's a little bit clearer I think to see that you're adding adding a row here and then adding a row plus one here. Now we do need to remember to continue iterating our triangle and vertex trackers here as well. So vertex is actually only going to go up one per time we iterate through here. And our triangles is going to go up six still because we are going through all six triangles. So T plus equals six. The other quick gotcha, if we were to go and start our grid right now, it would look a little bit funky. And that's because we have to remember when we get to the end of the row, we've only gone through grid size vertices when there is grid size plus one in the row. So once we're at the end of the row, we do need to iterate our vertices one more time so we start into the new row. And with all of that we now have, we should have our um, same kind of grid idea. Let's jump back over here. You should hit play. We should see again a 3x3 three three grid size 1 right now. And it appears here just as we had it. We can reduce the cell size and we'll see that changes size a little bit. Still centered on 0, 0 but the um, grid overall is a little bit smaller. So that is working for us. And now what the big, whoop, not 10.82, just one. What the big difference here though is, if you recall last time when I started changing the heights of these, they all broke into their own individual quads. We can do something similar again here. I'm going to change, instead of just putting y at zero, I'm gonna put it at um, x plus y. I'm gonna multiply this by about 0.2 f so that it's not an outrageous slope for us. 
But now what's going to happen is so every row we for every row and every column we increase, we're actually going to be increasing the altitude a little bit. So once we hit play now, we see that that slopes. There's this distinct slope to it. And not only is there this distinct slope, but the quads all are still joined. They're, you know, this vertex is shared by all four of these quads, so they all smoothly go up together. And that's really the effect that you get. That's what makes this different from the discrete grid, is that you get that smooth motion. You can you could even, you know, do something like an exponential increase and you would see it curve upward. And that's really the impact of sharing those vertices, kind of like we talked about a couple videos ago, is that you get that smooth motion instead of the distinct um, quads. Now that also means, however, that you're not going to be able to do things like if you have a texture and you want to cut it off, you, you, would, you wouldn't be able to cut it off sharply between these. You would have to have some sort of a smooth gradation. So there are benefits and there are kind of um, setbacks to both options. It really depends on what you're looking for for your particular game. This pretty much wraps up our talk about grids. In our next video, we're going to start talking about cubes and building cubes um, through code. And so we're going to get started on that in our next video. And until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.